Are you going back to school? Are you going to be looking for a new computer? Are you looking on the used market? Are you looking for a 2012 MacBook Pro? Well, I'm here today to talk about a MacBook Pro that I've had for 10 years, and I want to talk to you about how it's held up. I want to talk to you about what it's good for, what it's not, and if it's something that you should be looking at. So let's get into the video. Let's talk tech. I'm Arnell with Arden Lee Tech. In today's video, I want to talk about the MacBook Pro from 2012. This particular MacBook is a really good, sturdy MacBook that the unibody design has been in, <laughs> in production with Apple for a very long time. And uh, they've basically updated it. And even today, the MacBooks today still look reminiscent of the MacBooks from 10, 12 years ago. Now, I want to talk about some of the different ways that this MacBook has held up. One in particular is the design. Like I've said, it's very sturdy. It's a very strong uh, unibody design. The aluminum on it is just phenomenal. It still feels very sleek and very good to the touch. The keyboard is very good. Uh, I love the lights under the keyboard. I love the, the click and the feel of the keyboard. The trackpad is just one of the best trackpads that I've personally used on a laptop. And one of the key features that I still to this day absolutely love is the very well balanced and uh, well designed hinge. So that way you can actually lift the MacBook screen with one hand and it's no big deal. You don't have to do the shuffle of trying to, you know, hold down the bottom while you're, you know, lifting up the screen. If you have other stuff in your other hand, you can actually lift it up with one hand. It's just, it's very well thought out, well designed. And I really applaud uh, Apple for that. The screen is still a great resolution screen and the performance of it is actually pretty good, which leads into sort of the, the biggest topic for this laptop is how is the performance actually held up? Well, I am using the latest software that you're able to use from Apple's design language, uh, which is Mac OS Catalina. Now you can actually upgrade it and do some workarounds to get it to the newest and latest OS, which is Monterey. I know plenty of people that have upgraded it to Monterey and it actually works great for them, very minimal bugs. And for the most part, they really don't have any issues with it. But I just wanted to play it safe and just go with the Catalina update. Now, my particular MacBook is the 13 inch from mid 2012. So this has the 2.5 gigahertz processor, the i5 processor. Um, this has eight gigs of RAM and an Intel graphics card. The performance is actually pretty good for your simple day-to-day -day tasks. If you're checking your email, if you're writing up Word documents, doing Excel spreadsheets, just surfing the web, even using it for iMessage, uh, FaceTime, all these different things, it's actually working very well. And for the most part, most of the applications open up pretty smoothly. Now, if there's an application you haven't opened in a few months, or uh, you know it's been in suspended uh, animation for a very long time, then yeah, it'll take a minute or two for it to boot up. In some cases, a lot longer than a minute or two, but Overall, it's actually a pretty good, strong, reliable uh, computer that's really held up quite well. Now, one big suggestion that I have for you is if you are going to continue using you, this particular MacBook, probably a computer just in general, if you're gonna continue using it later on in the day or if you're gonna continue using it before the battery is about to die, uh, so if you have a pretty full charge and you're gonna use it in a day or two, uh, then I do recommend just putting it in sleep mode, just closing down the screen um, and not actually shutting it down because when you shut it down and you turn it back on, that is going to take forever for it to boot back up and get all the processes and everything all spinning and working again. And honestly, when I wake it up from sleep mode, I'm pretty much able to go within about 60 seconds. Whereas if I shut it down and turn it back on, it's honestly a five to 10 minute affair and it blows my mind how much of a difference that makes. Now, moving on to some of the areas where it has not held up very well, the battery life is pretty abysmal, at least in mine. Now, that is something that I can just pop out the old battery and put in a new one, and I'd be good to go. Um, I haven't gotten around to it yet, and I know that a lot of people, they're just not really into actually opening up the computer and doing all that kind of stuff, but if you're somebody looking for a computer on the budget, and you know, you're looking at this computer and you could probably find it for 100 bucks, 150 bucks. 
Um, it might not be a bad idea to get this, buy a brand new uh, battery and pop it in, boom, good to go. Now the performance. I don't recommend this computer as it is for video editing, photo editing, any kind of labor intensive tasks. The reason being is that this has an older generation of the i5 processor, uh, a much slower gigahertz processor, and it just doesn't spin as fast. It doesn't do as much as the upgraded models, even of that year would be able to do. Uh, they also had an i7 at the time. The i7 outperforms the i5 naturally, and the i5 was just more so for your basic everyday tasks. And if you were somebody that was a video editor, a photo editor, uh, you were probably going with the i7. You were probably going with the faster and higher processor uh, that you know just would have made more sense. So if you are a you know going to college and you are going to be doing anything with graphic design, I definitely don't recommend this particular model. Now there are some things that you can do to help speed things up a little bit. It's not going to make it a brand new, you know, 2022 computer, um, but it does help it a little bit. You could swap out the hard drive uh, with a SSD uh, that will, you know, obviously eliminate the moving parts of the hard drive, waiting for that to spin up and gathering all that memory and data. Uh, it's actually pretty instantaneous with an SSD. So you could do that. That actually helps to speed up your opening of your apps and, and things like that. And the second thing you can do is actually upgrading the RAM. Depending on the model that you get, there's a certain limit of size of RAM that you could get. Uh, I have the eight gig. So uh, the most that I can upgrade it to in this particular model is to 16 gig, which would be two eight gigabyte memory sticks. And for the most part, both of these upgrades, those are pretty easy uh, upgrades that you can do with just basic tools that you need to, you know, be able to open up, you know, obviously near the right screwdriver size, uh, but you should be able to upgrade these things pretty easily. And there are tons and tons and tons of different tutorials on YouTube showing you how to open the case, where to put the screws, you know, what screws go where, what are the length of the screws, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the upgrades that you can do for these things are pretty user-friendly and pretty approachable for most people. Now there are some limitations, you know, obviously with the OS, you're uh, basically limited to as far as what you're able to do through stock ability, um, you know, from what a Apple recommends, you are limited to uh, Mac OS Catalina. So you're not gonna get the upgrades and certain features that Mac OS, uh, you know, Monterey has and, and other things like that, but you, are able to get a pretty good consistent Apple experience for a very low entry price point. Um, like I said, you can get this for about $100, $150. I'll have an affiliate link down below if you'd like to check this out for yourself and that helps to support the channel. Like I said, if you gotta put in a new battery, put in a new SSD and put in you know some new RAM, you're still looking at about three, maybe $400 probably even less if you're able to find a good deal and you know budget properly so there's lots of opportunity with this particular macbook and honestly i still highly recommend it for most people especially for younger adults going back to college uh you know you're looking for your first computer you have you're saving up you know for maybe you've always had a windows pc and you're wanting to switch over to apple and see what the apple experience is like this would be a great entryway and uh you know it can help you to save up some more money to upgrade it later on so if you're in the market for a MacBook and you're looking for an older one, I do recommend the 2012. Obviously a newer one would be fine as well. Lots of different uses for a MacBook like this and lots of different markets for a MacBook like this. So that does it for my honest thoughts and impressions on the MacBook Pro from 2012. It has been 10 years, it really doesn't feel like that, but this computer has really held up and it's helped me to do a lot of the basic tasks that I do every day. And there's really no need to have to upgrade to a new computer in my particular case, since I'm able to do a lot of basic things from it. Um, but if I was a you know video editor, if I was a uh, photographer and I needed to do all these different things, I would definitely, definitely, definitely invest in a better and stronger and faster, more capable computer. But for my needs, this is perfect. No need for me to upgrade. Anyways, I'm so glad that you checked us out. If you're looking for this computer, like I said, we have an affiliate link down below. You can check it out for yourself and appreciate you being here. Catch you in the next one. Peace.